These are the assembly instructions for my gazebo box. Because the file for this project is quite large, I've split it up into three different parts. This is a piece of Cricut chipboard. It's the two mil. I'm just putting double-sided tape along the four edges of my piece of chipboard. And I'm also randomly going to add some double-sided tape. So normally I would use glue um, in the center and double-sided tape on the edges, but I've decided to make my base out of Cricut Pearl paper. You could use wrapping paper or even vinyl to do this, but since I'm using this paper, it doesn't react with my glue very well, so I've used double-sided tape instead on my chipboard. I'm going to release the backing, and I'm going to take my green piece. I've already scored where I want to place my box, so I'm just going to flip my piece upside down so that the scoring is on my mat. And if you see right on the edge here, this shows me a corner, and that's where my chipboard corner should be. And I'm trying to make sure that I have an even border all the way around. So whether you're using glue or you're using double-sided tape, it's good to take your brayer and just run it along. And then you want to flip your piece over again. I'm taking my pokey tool, but if you don't have a tool like this, you can use a ballpoint pen that's run out of ink or something that has a rounded end. And you just want to go along the edges here. What I'm doing is I'm breaking down the fibers of my paper so that it bends a little more easily around the corners and the edges of my chipboard. I cut my chipboard using my knife blade in my Maker 3. Take one of the corners, it doesn't matter which one. I'm just going to fold it over so that there's an even square here. And I'm just pushing down on those triangles on the top and on the side. If you don't have a bone folder, you can use a ruler or something with a nice straight edge. So I'm just going to flip this back and I'm putting glue all along that triangle, a little on the edge of my chipboard and on the top of my chipboard. So I've got a generous amount of glue. Nobody's really gonna see this, so it's just to get it stuck down. I'm going to flip my piece around and we do that with all four corners. All right, so now that I've finished my four corners, I'm just going to grab my chipboard and I'm going to raise it up all the way over and then turn it under. So it makes a nice clean straight edge on my board. And I'm going to do that for all four sides. Okay, so now I'm just going to take the backing off my double-sided tape and then push down on the edges so they're nice and tight. And I'm gonna do that for all four of them. And so then I have this piece of silver cardstock in the shape of a hexagon that I am going to just glue down within the score lines that are on the base. There's also another piece that fits here. I'm not gonna glue that one down yet. We're gonna save that one for later. This was cut out of 65 pound shimmer cardstock paper, but you could use just about any kind of cardstock. You just wanna be sure that it's something that interacts well with your adhesive. So these two pieces cut out of Cricut Craft Board are going to be joined together to form the hexagon for the gazebo. One of them has an open window in the center. That's actually gonna be the door to our gazebo. So first I'm gonna fold down on all the score lines. So these are the external walls of my gazebo. So I wanna decorate the interior. I have six pieces of acetate that I am going to glue into the openings of each side of my gazebo. This is Cricut acetate. You wanna remove the protective film from both sides. It's very thin double-sided tape and I'm just putting around the perimeter of all the openings. So I'm just gonna put my double-sided tape around the perimeter of my six openings. I'm just placing my acetate over the openings like so. I'm gonna do that for all six openings on both walls. So next we have these liner pieces that are going to go on the interior. And they all have a tab at the bottom. We're gonna fold down on that tab. So on both pieces, I'm going to glue down the two end pieces. The end piece that doesn't have a tab on the side of it on both panels, we're going to leave for now. So with double-sided tape, I'm creating a border all around the opening over my acetate. I'm folding the tab at the bottom upwards like so. So I'm taking the liner off my double-sided tape. I'm putting glue back side of this piece. I'm not going to do these little thin pieces. I'm just going to do the perimeter 
and I want those little tiny skinny pieces stacked right on top of one another. So I've positioned two of my panels and I'm leaving this one for later. I'm going to do the same with the two others. So I'm adhering double-sided tape around the perimeter of these two openings just on top of the acetate of my two panels. I'm going to take the liner off my double-sided tape. So I'm just putting glue on the back of this panel. I'm avoiding those little tiny strips in the center and the tab at the bottom. And then I'm just placing this panel very carefully so that those little strips in the center of my opening are stacked on top of one another. And I'm going to do that with a neighboring panel as well, and I'm keeping this one for later. So now I'm going to attach these two sections together, putting two rows of double-sided tape beside one another, just along the edge of this piece. And I'm going to release the liner. You could do this with glue. If you're using glue and acetate, it takes a very, very long time for your glue to dry properly. So you want to make sure that the top and bottom are flush and that the cut edge is right against the score line of your piece, like so. Then I'm putting double-sided tape around the rest of the perimeter of my opening. Then I'm going to take another one of my panels, making sure that I've folded down on that tab. I'm going to put glue everywhere except on the tab in those little thin strips. So I'm just stacking up those thin strips on top of one another as best I can. So even with your double-sided tape, when there's a little bit of glue on your double-sided tape, it gives you a little bit of, of wiggle room before it dries. So this is the inside. So now I'm just going to put, again, two layers of double-sided tape right on the edge. Then I'm going to take the liner off my double-sided tape. I'm going to fold one end over with my tab exposed. I'm going to fold my other end over. I want to position it so that the cut edge of that piece is right on the score line of my tab. I want to put my last liner in place. So I've just reached in there and I've put double-sided tape around the three sides of this piece. I'm going to release the liner for the tape and then I'm going to take another one of those panels making sure they're folded down on the score line at the bottom and I'm just covering the panel with glue except on the tab and those thin lines. I'm just lowering my piece into place and then when I pop my piece up I've already got the walls of my gazebo started. So my decorative pieces are cut out of 65 pound shimmer cardstock. My base pieces are cut out of craft boards. I'm going to start by putting glue on all those tabs. The easiest way to do it is just to lay it flat on your mat and just go in there and put glue from the score line all the way down to the base and do that on all six of them. I'm trying to not let my hexagon collapse because I don't want any of that glue getting anywhere else except those tabs. And then I'm going to pop up my gazebo, making sure all those tabs are folded under into the center of my box. And then I'm going to take my decorative piece. So this is the 65 pound cardstock. And I'm just going to lower it in there. I'm going to kind of shape my box. The thing to do right now is to take this base piece that's sturdier. You want to make sure that your walls are following this base piece because if you don't then your roof won't fit so well. And I'm, while the glue is still wet I'm just positioning my interior piece. I'm going in with my bone folder and I'm pushing down on the edges where all those tabs are just so that the glue is adhering properly. And then I'm going to take my craft board hexagon and put glue all over the bottom of it. And I'm going to place it at the bottom of my box, which I have upside down on my mat here. I just want to make sure that the edges are nice and flush. Flip it over again. This time I'm just using my bone folder to spread the glue all over. So now I'm going to put the decorative panels on the outside. I'm going to put glue all over this panel, even those little tiny ones, except the tab for now. And I'm taking my gazebo and I'm just placing it so that this piece is exactly over the openings and these little thin pieces are stacked up. And then I can put glue on that tab piece, fold it to the bottom, make sure it's nice and adhered, like so. Now you're going to continue that for all the other panels, except this one, of course, doesn't have the cutouts. 
in the opening. So make sure you put that one in, this, in the right spot. So now that the side panels and the bottoms are all glued down, I've got six of these red pieces. I'm folding on the score line that's in the center of them, and then the score line that's at the bottom that'll form two tabs. And then I'm just putting glue on the underside of that red piece, like so. And then I'm placing this piece so that it covers the join between my panels and that the tabs are flush with the bottom, like so. And I'm going to do that for all six of those joins. So now that I've put all my red pieces on, I'm just going to put my brick layer on top. Bricks go all the way down to the bottom, but there's sort of a border on the top. I want to make sure that the border is glued up to the top of the window like so. I have six of them to glue down in place. Now for my brick panels, I just wanted to mention that I used one of my Cricut gel pens, the Glitter Silver, and then my lines were too defined and not obvious enough, so I went over the lines with a white pencil crayon just to make them a little bit more obvious and not so perfect because brick lines are never exactly perfect. So the next step, so I'm looking at the front, this is the entrance to my gazebo. I'm going to move my hexagon over one panel like so, and I just want to glue a little tiny strip at the top, just a little accent piece like so. I'm just going to put glue along my strip, and I'm going to start it just about there, run it along the top like so, so just at the bottom of the window. And I'm just going to keep going all the way around like that, adding the glue, just wrapping that strip around the perimeter of my gazebo. Part two of the video is the roof assembly. So this is the main roof part. Now I've cut this out of Cricut White Craft board. I'm just folding down on all the score lines. I'm going to put glue all along this tab. I'm joining the cut line of my triangle to the score line of the tab. And then I'm just going in there with my bone folder and I'm just spreading all that glue. So I have two long thin strips with tabs at the end. It's going to fold down on all the score lines. So I'm just putting glue from the score line to the bottom of my, of the edge of my white piece, making sure that that piece is between the score lines on my gray piece, like so. So I'm going to do that for the first three panels. I'm pulling this one back up again. I glued it down, but um, I want to put the tab on the other end under it. So I've just pulled it up. I'm going to put glue just under there and all the way along the next flap. And then I'm going to take the tab and tuck it under. And then I'm just going to continue along. So I have this decorative strip. I'm just putting glue along the back of it and I'm just wrapping it around, trying to keep it as straight as possible in the vertical center of the strip. So this is the top of my cupola on my roof. And I'm just folding down on all the score lines. And I'm actually gonna take these tabs and fold them upwards. Okay, so next I have these tiny little rectangles, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue my little tiny black rectangles, glue them into the center of my white rectangles, like so. And I'm going to do all six of them. There are six rectangles on the perimeter of this hexagon. Using the score lines as my guide, I'm going to try to glue them in the center, like so. And I'm going to glue down all six of them. All right, so now that they're all glued down, I'm gonna put glue on those little tabs that are in between my rectangles. I'm just going to bring the cut edge of one rectangle up to the score line of that tab, like so. And I'm going to do that for all six tabs. So now I'm going to take this piece and put it on the top of my roof. I'm just putting glue on the underside of those six tabs. I'm placing my pieces you want the score line from the cupola to hit the score line of the roof all the way around. And that will ensure that you have proper central placement. So these pieces are going to be adhered to the rooftop, but before that we're going to put 
the shingles on the roof. So I have a mess of shingle pieces. Now these are the larger shingle pieces. There are smaller ones in the file, but they belong on the roof for the cupola. So we're gonna put those aside for now. We're just working on those large pieces. So what I'm doing now is I'm just sort of separating them so that I have them grouped in order based on their length. I've broken my pieces up into piles of six and made sure that I have equal amounts of the three different sizes in each grouping. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the largest size and start at the bottom and I'm putting glue all along the back of the piece. I'm positioning it so those two little cutouts are approximately on the same distance from the edge of my piece here and there. Then I'm going to take my next piece. I want to position it so that the bottom of my shingle is right at the top of that little horizontal part in the cutout. I also want to position it so that this cutout here hits about halfway on the shingle above it. And just positioning my piece. Now what I found really helpful to do on these root pieces so that you don't get too far off track is I like to draw straight lines on my piece. They're just faint lines with a pencil. And these are going to serve as guidelines when you're putting your pieces down just to make sure that you don't go too far off course. So I'm just going to continue on to the very top and then I'm going to do the six other pieces the exact same way. So now that all my shingles are glued down, I'm just going to flip my piece over and cut along the edge of my piece on both sides. So I'm just going to grab my roof piece. I'm going to put glue right up to that score line and all the way down all over that trapeze shape and I'm going to grab that panel and just do it right on making sure that it's within those score lines and right up against the top and I'm going to do that with all six panels. So next I have these pieces, the little arrow at the top, arrow at the bottom, and the score line in the center. So I'm folded down on the score line. I'm just going to put glue on the underside. And then I'm going to position my piece so that the score line is over the join. So the top is just at the top of those two pieces. And the bottom is just where those two pieces meet. I'm just, I've got my hand on the inside, my hand on the outside, and I'm just applying pressure to make sure that that glue takes. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for all six pieces. So next we're going to do the little roof for the top of our box. So the one that looks like a sun you want to just fold down on all the score lines. On this one you want to do the same thing. You want to put glue on this little tab right here. I'm just going to close up that piece by bringing that triangle over. So you want that cut edge against the score line of your tab and that forms my little peak. I'm going to glue this piece onto the base. I'm just putting glue on one of those tabs, gluing it to the to one of those sides of the triangle. I want the edge of this piece to be right against the score line of my tab. And then I'm going to put glue on the next tab and glue that piece into place. So once those two are in place, I'm putting glue on the remainder of those tabs. Just sort of pinching them into place. Just as I did with the rest of my roof pieces, I have these tiny shingle pieces. So I'm just going to do like I exactly as I did for the other roof pieces and just apply shingles to these six pieces. So I have my six pieces here. I didn't bring the shingles all the way up to the top. I left that top triangle bare. So I've got seven rows of shingles. I'm just putting glue all over my first triangle. And then I want the top of that triangle to be just at the peak of my roof. It should overlap by just about an eighth of an inch at the bottom. So I'm just going to put these pieces on. I'm just continuing all the way around. So I've glued on all the panels with the shingles on them. And then I have this piece that looks a little bit like a spider. There are score lines and I'm using my Cricut scraping tool and I'm just folding down on those score lines. These are very, very narrow pieces. I'm just going to put glue on the underside all over this piece. I'm going to position it on top of my roof piece and what I'm going to do is I'm going to push down the very center of it 
just to make sure that it's well adhered. I'm just pushing down on all those pieces. And then I'm going to take my small scissors and I'm just going to snip the little edges just to make it a little more finished looking. So I'm just putting glue on the surface of my hexagon. And we're going to try to center this. It might be a bit easier to do it upside down so you can see. But I'm going to try to center this, make sure there's an even border all the way around. I'm just pushing down. I've got my hand in the center there. And I'm just pushing down on that roof. Make sure that it adheres properly. And that's the rooftop completed for my gazebo.